So let's begin. Uh, I hope uh, other will join in a while. So good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we are here for peer-to-peer -peer exchange on electric three-wheelers uh, with Indian and African cities, uh, mainly from Kochi, Dar es Salaam, and Kigali. Uh, this exchange is a part of EU-funded uh, Solutions Plus project in cooperation with the I I uh, International Climate Initiative um, funded or ICI funded uh, decarbonizing transport em uh, in emerging uh, economies. Um, I am Shritu Shrestha from Bhopatal Institute, uh, part of both Solutions Plus and this DTE project. Uh, before we start, I would like to um, share a short on housekeeping rules. Uh, this webinar is uh, recorded. And if you have any question, uh, please uh, share it in a chat box or raise your hand, uh, whatever you feel like. And in few slides, I will be going through uh, or going to brief you uh, on, on Solutions Plus project or our Living Lab on Dar es Salaam and our DTE project. Uh, yeah, uh, Solutions Plus uh, project aims to, in, uh, to provide integrated electric, uh, mo electric mobility solutions in large areas in developing and uh, emerging economies. Uh, it is a four-year project um, which will be running until 2023. Um, it has 46 consortium partners uh, from uh, research institute, uh, academia, business industries, and local government, um, also UN organizations and transport operators. Um, as you can see, the project is supporting uh, 10 living labs in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and, um, and Europe, uh, mainly in, 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 uh, in Africa, uh, Dar es Salaam and Kigali. Uh, going briefly on the Dar es Salaam demonstration action, uh, the main objective of this uh, living lab um, in Dar es Salaam is uh, to, uh, the main objective is to improve first and last mile connectivity to BRT uh, through electric uh, feeder services. So electric three feeder services here, we are focusing on electric three wheelers um, and also on electric uh, bicycles and also supporting on electric mobility policies uh, also, uh, and support a BRT electrification and also bringing in the digital integration in whole uh, mobility uh, services. Uh, here for electric three-wheelers, uh, which is also called Bajaz. Uh, so here, what, what has been done under uh, in, in Dar es Salaam is a large data collection and also uh, identification of business models. Uh, this has uh, this this uh, this demonstration action uh, also support local manufacture and also uh, assem uh, assembly via two local innovators, uh, mainly auto truck, um, or uh, supported by Dar Institute of Technology and Suscom. Uh, here in this uh, in this project, we are focusing on both new and converted e bazaars. Um, and, and we are also supporting the upcoming larger e bazaars fleet. Uh, beside this, uh, this demonstration action in the, in the whole sum, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Dar es Salaam Living Lab is also focusing on, of course, the data collection. Uh, we are also supporting the capacity building activities on the global, regional, and city level. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we're supporting the startup uh, with the seed funding and also a matchmaking with EU industries. Um, here also we are supporting on the policy, uh, policy, um, uh, policy support on scale up, uh, scale up and financing of the uh, uh, living life activities. Uh, with this, I'll just go briefly, just let me go back. Uh, uh, briefly go through the uh, other the project as I mentioned earlier, DTE project. Uh, it is mainly supporting our uh, transport decarbonization in um, in Argentina, Azerbaijan, India, and Morocco. Uh, here we have here uh, Kochi, which is also part of our DTE uh, project. Uh, the project uh, support uh, development and provision of a framework allowing quantitative assessment of transport mitigation actions 
Here in this project, we also facilitate policy dialogue across all the relevant stakeholders uh, from the national, lo uh, national, uh, local, national state and local government. Um, in this project, we are also supporting the capacity building activities uh, to decarbonize transport. Uh, this project, uh, as I mentioned, is the funded by ICI and also um, uh, is implemented or coordinated by ITF and uh, Wuppertal Institute. Uh, with this, I would like to begin our um, our presentation. I uh, would uh, like to invite um, Simi here. Um, uh, let me sh stop sharing the screen. Yeah. Uh, Simi is our um, our colleague whom we have been working for decades, so to say. Uh, so she's from Kochi Municipality and working under CHEAD. Um, Simi, uh, yeah, we would like to uh, ask you to share your screen. And besides that, we uh, here in this session we are joined by various uh, stakeholder from from our cities, uh, mainly from Dar es Salaam and Kigali, uh, uh, Delfina, uh, also uh, Moses, um, uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, happy to have everyone here. So after Simi's presentation, I would like to have uh, more of the interactive uh, session. Uh, please uh, share your questions, as I mentioned, on the chat box or, um, or raise your hand. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity, uh, Shudu and Sunny, and for inviting Kochi for this peer-to-peer uh, -peer exchange. Um, for us, it starts way back from uh, 2017 when Kochi was part of Solutions Project, uh, when we, we we were one of the pilot cities uh, for the Urban Pathways Projects. And uh, um, that is where we started off with our e-mobility uh, or the idea of having electric three-wheelers. Prior to that, we didn't have... Uh, any much idea about you know converting the existing uh, transport system to electric mobility? Actually, in India, uh, it was in 2011 that the you know the EV policy was formulated, and uh, you know government started seriously thinking about converting the existing uh, transport public transport systems into electric uh, vehicles. So that's how the Fame One, Fame Two, and uh, various other uh, uh, policies supporting. Uh, uh, the conversion or the introduction of uh, electric uh, vehicles into the market came into existence. Now, um, when we are talking about Kochi, uh, in Kerala, the uh, Kochi is actually uh, on the uh, southwestern coast of India, to be precise on its location, and uh, it is a part of the larger uh, uh, state called Kerala. So uh, the state government or the Kerala government uh, had actually introduced EV policy in 2019. So you can see where we are lying. You know, we are we are in between the uh, national uh, national initiative and the state in, state uh, you know initiative to push uh, uh, electric uh, vehicles in the uh, in the in, in the existing systems to get that conversions. So we were in the midst of you know con trying to introduce uh, the electric auto rickshaws uh, into the uh, into the existing system and. Uh, in 2017, we started off, uh, uh, and uh, under the Urban Pathways Project, we were kind of having these ideas about uh, what kind of uh, a system is prevalent, how can we go about it, what are the benefits, and we were first given a uh, given an on hand, uh, you know, uh, introduction to this uh, entire uh, new system that we were not, uh, you know, earlier uh, um, aware of, or we didn't know in detail. So that's how we started off, and um, and uh, it's it's from there that we begin the uh, electric uh, three wheeler journey uh, for the Kochi city. So um, it started off in a very small way, but um, you know uh, we have been able to get support from Bhopal Institute. We've been able to get support from the UN Habitat. We've been able to uh, get the support from GIC, and uh, we are here and we are launching the hundred Auto fleet next month. So how did we, you know, go through this? What, what are the and what was the entire process for this, uh, for this whole, uh, you know, uh, project? Uh, that's what I'm going to focus mainly on, rather than on the technical aspects of what auto was. I mean, I will go through it, but then my focus would be the genesis of the project. So um, it it was the Kochi Municipal Corporation project, and we had uh, uh, 
uh, technical cooperation uh, from uh, the GIZ, uh, the Wuppertal Institute, the UN Habitat again, and we had funding from two different agencies, uh, from UN Habitat and from GIC. So when we were initially thinking of, uh, you know, uh, having uh, electric or introducing electric three three wheelers into the city. We were not sure from where to begin, what to do, or you know, uh, where will we get funds from, or how do we do it? We really don't have a pre-feasibility study, or how, how do we go about it? And that's when uh, we we had a discussion with Rupertal Institute and uh, with Oliver, who was uh, you know with us all throughout the project, and um, uh, it, it was a suggestion that came in to you know uh, get support or request support from UN Habitat. So uh, we had discussions with the UN Habitat. We had submitted our letter of intent for uh, piloting this project, and uh, slowly but steadily, we started, you know, having uh, some kind of a movement in the project as far as the funding partner was concerned. But back in the city, we were very, we were going slow. We were, uh, we were going slow in the sense that the Kerala state policy was was just not in place. It was only in the draft form and uh, the uh, state government was not having uh, you know a very uh, 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 a strong or a solid hold on having an electric uh, vehicle policy so things were kind of going very slowly for us by around 2019 uh, by when uh, you know we had all the discussions and everything things started taking a pace and uh, we were at that time aiming just for 20 autos, but then uh, the city council and uh, uh, us in CIAD and everyone who are involved in this project thought, why don't we make it 100 e autos? Because 20 is going to be very negligible and uh, it would be, you know, not much if it's on ground. So why don't we aim for 100 e autos? And in 2019 September, I clearly remember because the then mayor, uh, Ms. Samni Jain, we were having a discussion with her. And we told her, you know, the the need for having another AT fleet, and uh, she she agreed. And um, we we kind of requested for uh, additional funding uh, uh, from GIZ. And um, um, at that time, GIZ was not having any funds uh, kept apart or kept aside for this particular project because this was not part of their usual uh, uh, already desired project schedule. So this was an additional request from us. So we kind of followed up, followed up with them like a number of times. We had meetings with them a number of times. And, uh, you know, they came back to us saying they have uh, seed funding uh, for 80 autos. And so then we started off, uh, you know, with the idea of 100 autos. That was in 2019. So as you can see, uh, we have had a number of discussions with various stakeholders, the motor vehicle department, the uh, uh, the auto rickshaw uh, union. We have around uh, six different union, union in the sense political union. Um, those are holding different, different, uh, you know, unions of uh, auto rickshaw. So they all came together, six different unions came together to form the Ernakulam Jilla Auto Rickshaw Society, or what we call as the Ajax in short. Now, uh, Ajax is a society. It has a president, the board of board members, a board of directors uh, who actually look into the working of the uh, society members. So we, the first in first thing that we had to do was to convince them to you know get them on board and to have hundred drivers support us. This was like uh, this. This didn't uh, stop at like ten meetings or fifteen meetings. There were n number of meetings that we had to hold, you know, to convince them uh, to to get the drivers convinced and to convert or agree uh, to take up the uh, electric auto rickshaws. We had discussions with OEMs because this was the first time for me. It was the first time, you know, um, uh, having a discussion with OEMs. Um, are trying to uh, give out the ideas on behalf of the drivers as to what is expected and what we need. So this was this was a uh, this was a major uh, hectic process because uh, in uh, Kochi there is approximately 4,500 electric uh, um, 4,500 auto rickshaws running on diesel and petrol. You know, so uh, getting uh, a 
our aim is to actually get this 4,500 converted into electric. I mean, that will be a slow process, but we are aiming for that. So uh, uh, with uh, auto rickshaws being the uh, major uh, share of, you know, public transportation and uh, being a major uh, player in the uh, carbonizing of, uh, you know, transport, we thought we should start from the, uh, from the auto rickshaws. So that's how we, uh, you know, approached uh, electric, uh, the uh, Ernakulam Jila Auto Rickshaw District Cooperative Society, the JACs, spoke to them, uh, made them understand. We actually invited them to uh, a, a, a conference where when we were discussing about uh, uh, sustainable and low carbon uh, transport. Uh, we had sessions wherein we had experts coming in and talking about the need for having electric vehicles. That was the first kind of you know interaction the board directors of the society was having with regard to electric vehicles they were aware about you know the kind of vehicles have, um, moving out in other cities but this was the first kind of a detailed explanation that they were given so now since with that information um, they kind of moved to the members the 4500 uh, eoto uh, members that was there registered with the lakland jilla autoraksha society and uh, from there uh, discussions negotiations coercions and you know what not to everything everything we had to we had to finally uh, convince them you know the need for uh, giving up their petrol and diesel auto rickshaws to take up electric auto rickshaws so um, for us in this project um, ernakulam jilla auto rickshaw cooperative society or ijax is a beneficiary because they will be the ones who will be procuring the auto rickshaws they are the ones who will be uh, employing the drivers the model would be they are renting out the auto rickshaws purchased to the driver so they get some kind of an amount to keep with them now uh, this is kind of you know kind of a maintenance that would that 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 rent amount that they are collecting would be some kind of a maintenance cost that they can use initial phase to you know maintain the electric auto rickshaws that's being that's being uh, purchased now the funds that we are getting from UN Habitat and GIZ for these 100 EOTOs would be the subsidy amount. Not just subsidy amount, but also the, uh, the, the these funds would also cater to the uh, charging infrastructure that we'll be setting up. It's on the way. We are setting it up with the support of the Kerala State Electricity Board. Now, another advantage that, that played to us is that the Kerala State Electricity Board is right now having a, having a, a policy. Uh, to have a charging infrastructure, say, uh, in within 2022 at all major locations in the state to promote uh, EV, EV, electric vehicle usage. And this is as per the guidelines that has been set out by the state government. So uh, so for us, um, uh, you know, this, 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 uh, this uh, uh, Kerala EV policy of 2019 and the, the, and how the government has, you know, taken it up has actually uh, supported us in in moving this uh, project forward. So um, uh, in um, so slowly but steadily, you know the uh, the Ernakulam Jilla Autorickshaw Society started up. We are very convinced they were quite ready for the project and they kind of accepted the fact. So in 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 uh, 2020, they kind of signed the uh, JDI, the Joint Declaration of Intent, with the Kochi Municipal Corporation and said. And uh, as per it, it's, it's, it's a non-financial binding agreement just to have, you know, just to give them a, a, a kind of a, a feel that, you know, they are the real owners of the project and that this is a very serious project and we're not just talking about because a lot of convincing is required as far as uh, these uh, these members, the board members of the Ernakulam Jilla Trisha Travel Cooperative Society is concerned because they are kind of earning quite you know, uh, with the kind of auto rickshaw that they're having, the petrol and diesel uh, auto rickshaw they are running. And now we need to convince them to, you know, to, you know, to uh, convert to the electric vehicles and also to let them know that they wouldn't be going down as far as their, uh, you know, income or uh, the per day income that they're generating is concerned. So with JDI, they were on board and uh, we started discussions with uh, various oems we had paijo we had mahindra we had tata every other uh, agencies were called forward for 
and um, um, we had discussions with them. We kind of uh, uh, made them uh, speak with the Ednaakulam Jilla Trisha Society board members. The Jags had a conversation with them, what they needed and what was the speculated time and how much is the road that is needed. And everything was discussed with the OEMs. And a request was sent to the OEMs to, you know, to, to give out as a tender. You know, the, the JAX actually rolled out a tender, a, a tender document was rolled out. And, uh, you know, all other, uh, all the OEMs came back with the amount, with the, with the estimate and the speculations and what cost each of it would cost. And in the meantime, they also had, uh, you know, uh, 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 try, you know, uh, try test, test run each of the uh, electric uh, products. So as you can see in this picture right now, there, there is Biogeo, uh, there is uh, Tata and every, every, every other, the Mahindra and uh, every other vehicles were brought in. They did the test drive. The technical people from the motor vehicle department was also there to support them, uh, uh, to let them know what exactly is, is, is the, is the uh, you know, a, a technical aspects of each auto rickshaw. And uh, they finally kind of, uh, 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 decided on one of the auto rickshaws. So uh, uh, you know, um, uh, this is this this slide is uh, just a brief on you know how uh, uh, about the uh, uh, Ajax and uh, the introduction of e autos. What we believe uh, introduction of e autos uh, is like you know for us it is like it is it is it is actually a solution to you know the emerging emissions. We we kind of know. Uh, the, the scenario with air pollution and uh, the climate change and all other issues that we are facing right now. So uh, the reason as to why we considered uh, electric uh, three-wheelers for it is that uh, it, is, uh, it is better for Kochi's uh, streets because uh, streets are quite narrow uh, in Kochi. So uh, it's, it, it is one public transport that is easily accessible through even the narrow streets. And uh, it, in one way or the other, this would act as a feeder for our uh, metro, Kochi Metro Rail uh, that's, that's there. And uh, another uh, possibility that we are seeing is, but we don't know, uh, it has to be yet uh, tried out, you know, a replacement for two wheelers. And uh, our mode of E3 wheelers is going to be a shared mode of E auto. So we had to, you know, get a separate uh, approval from the uh, state government. We had to get uh, approval from the motor vehicle de department. We had to get a separate sanction for running as a shared E auto. It's not a normal E auto that's running on one-to-one -one passenger basis. It's a shared E auto. So, so there were uh, various factors involved while we were, uh, you know, uh, thinking of introducing uh, e-auto into this uh, project uh, we had we had we had the discussions and discussions and trainings and trainings for 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 like n number of times we had to give them because uh, this was a process and to have them on board was very important to 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 gain their trust and to make them understand the need for you know this conversion because this is a drastic change as far as they are concerned both both a psychological and uh, and uh, you know a physical model change for them so they they need to understand that this change is for the better this change is for the good and that uh, this will not uh, affect them badly so we we kind of need, needed to have experts from the uh, from the uh, vehicle department we needed to have experts who kind of uh, uh, were with the uh, uh, transport department, with the Kerala State Transport Department, and who have experienced, uh, you know, uh, the uh, electric vehicle uh, system in other cities. So we needed to bring uh, such people on board uh, for them to really understand that uh, electric three-wheelers are going to be a boon uh, to the city of Kochi. You know, when during the uh, during the uh, pandemic, we were not able to conduct any kind of an online uh, or offline uh, uh, training sessions, and we didn't want to lose what we had fed them. You know, the kind of confidence that we had gained with them. So it was like a two year of uh, no offline meeting. So we had to gain their confidence, and then online trainings were uh, you know uh, conducted uh, for them to understand. Uh, uh, what are what are the what are the best practices that is there in other cities in India? 
what is it? It, it? it is from the very minute details that we are able to kind of make them understand the need and the uh, possibility and the opportunity that is available for electric three wheelers. You can see that um, these are various online trainings that we had based on the operations based uh, uh, on uh, examples from various other intensities and uh, we were trying to share knowledge, uh, skill and the attitude of each and every, uh, trying to change the attitude also of each and every drivers who are actually involved in this project. So we right now identified approximately 120 drivers for this, uh, uh, for this project and of which uh, uh, 20 are women, so we are also planning on that. Um, this is just a brief note on uh, the Adnaklam Jilla Autorisha Drivers Cooperative Society. It's first of its kind umbrella body, and uh, it, it is it is basically a group of uh, six trade unions who are affiliated, you know, to various different uh, political parties. Now, um, if this was this 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 is basically because uh, this has empowered uh, the society to build a, a network of intermediate public transport uh, through fleet based operations and um, yeah and osa is an app as you can see in the picture osa a u s a it's basically an app that is being developed uh, for the auto rickshaw uh, for these electric three wheelers that will uh, give them a more opportunity as far as uh, trips are concerned, as far as their op op opportunity to, to uh, you know, increase their income. So also, and also for tracking where the vehicle is or what exactly is the uh, situation right now. Before I conclude, the kind of, uh, uh, kind of system that we are uh, trying to uh, use is a, a three-seater uh, electric auto rickshaw. It's, and, the, and Piaggio is the OEM that has been selected by our uh, Edna Klum Jilla Auto Rickshaw Driver Cooperative Society. It's a three-seater and uh, the auto rickshaw is run on a share mode. And uh, uh, it, this is a pilot project. So we'll be having it uh, run within the city from, uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for a couple of months. And uh, uh, our intention is to, you know, scale this up because uh, we kind of now are in a positive position wherein we can approach more funders and more donors. But for the time being, we'll need to sustain the project because sustainability is one factor that uh, a funder or a donor would be looking into. So we will be, we'll be looking into uh, the project being sustained for another, say, six months or uh, six to eight months and then probably we will be uh, looking on uh, you know uh, uh, kind of repeating the same thing and probably increase uh, the number of auto rickshaws from 100 to 200 slowly but steadily you know gradually converting the entire 4500 into uh, electric uh, three wheelers yeah thank you thank you Sutu. Uh, thank you uh, for your informative presentation. Uh, I have two questions. The first is regarding the formation of the societies. So for instance, in Dalai Islam, uh, you, find, you, you find the drivers are already uh, in organized society. So I wanted to ask if there were uh, societies in Kochi because in your presentation, you mentioned that there was a formulation of our society. So I want to know if there were pre-existing uh, societies or not. And the other one uh, is I wanted to know how did the UN Habitat and the GIZ, GIZ funded the society during their purchasing? Uh, thank you so much, Jurika. So uh, coming to the first question, that is with regard to the uh, society, uh, this was first of its kind, you know, uh, uh, the formation of a society uh, or, you know, all the six unions um, that's being represented here or the auto rickshaw unions, you know, all the six different auto rickshaw unions coming together 
forming jointly forming a society as you know one under the under one umbrella uh, under one umbrella firm is first of its kind in kochi so we really don't have any other society that is there here in kochi this is first of its kind and we do have a special purpose vehicles or you know companies that's that's been formed for other purposes but for transportation in kochi this is a first of its kind so 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 we don't have any other uh, societies as now as of now uh, other than the arnakulam jilla auto rickshaw drivers cooperative society um secondly how did uh, un habitat and giz uh, fund uh, this uh, project so uh, we had actually uh, you know uh, uh, presented the pilot project description and the need and there was an opportunity in un habitat for such a funding so we 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 uh, used that 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 window that was open for funding and that's how uh, un habitat uh, agreed to fund the project and um, gis it has been in 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 kochi and has been working uh, with kochi for various projects so we are always kind of you know in discussion and in connect in connection with our counterparts with our nodal officers who are here in gis uh, from gis it who are here in kochi so we kind of always keep discussions on we kind of um, find out opportunities and um, that's when uh, this idea of you know having an at yoto because um, uh, i believe gis said uh, didn't have um, were not planning for any kind of an implementation project in kochi and uh, this was an that this was another window of opportunity for them to showcase you know a, a, a project so again uh, that was uh, 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 another window of opportunity for us and they were kind of uh, interested in the idea that we we shared and the kind of study or the pilot study we had and uh, they had their technical team come in and do the pre feasibility study for us and uh, from there we had this uh, we again requested for the implementation of uh, these eotos at eotos and um, they 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 uh, kind of discussed internally with their uh, headquarters back in germany and uh, found out if there is a possibility of funding or other any funds uh, available for you know supporting this project and the lucky to us there was some seed funds that was available and uh, that's how we got the support of gis it also in this yeah thanks for the explanation sumi um i hope the <clears throat> the the background of this 100 e autos uh, uh, is clear dorica um so um uh so initially uh, there was uh, uh so uh, the kochi metro rail limited i don't know how many of you are aware of it we have this metro so the kochi metro rail limited was actually having uh, um, electric auto rickshaws uh, as part of the fira service so it was like um, um, a few number of them um, but uh, but uh, but the 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 society or the arnakulam jilla auto rickshaw drivers cooperative society was was kind of um, uh very skeptical about having such uh, uh, such auto rickshaw because you know the uh, usually uh, the the uh, normal uh, auto rickshaws that is the the petrol or the diesel auto rickshaws they can kind of uh, uh, run on a longer distance compared to the uh, you know the electric auto rickshaws so uh, one challenge that we had to kind of try to convince the uh, drivers or the the uh, society was as far as how long can they kind of you know run the run the system or uh, uh, what would be uh, the distance that that uh, an auto can actually cover within the city as per the prescribed loop another uh, challenge uh, that we technical challenge that we faced was whether the, the battery whether it would be a swap mode battery or you know what 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 would be the kind of uh, charging that the the auto rickshaw or the society or the electric vehicle will be kind of using whether it could be a swap mode of uh, battery or the charging so right now we are using the swap mode because uh, uh, that is kind of what uh, the uh, you know auto rickshaw society feels is better and uh, right now they have uh, they have right now uh, agreed on having the swap mode and uh, uh finally uh, uh, uh the third uh, challenge would be the technical challenge that we faced would be you know as far as um, uh, how effective uh, 
you know, uh, having this uh, electric auto rickshaw would be, uh, or, uh, you know, as far as uh, the individual drivers are concerned, to, to, uh, to make them, uh, uh, you know, have, uh, understand the financial uh, difference, to make them kind of, um, you know, uh, believe and uh, understand that the electric auto rickshaw slowly but steadily will be giving them the same kind of, uh, you know, uh, what do you say? The same kind of income probably is was was another uh, you know uh, a technical glitch that we had, had actually faced. We had to try to convince them because um, uh, because uh, they were not quite kind of quite uh, willing to you know uh, probably uh, uh, take up the uh, auto rickshaws. Yeah. So these were the three things that uh, we felt. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Simi. I see Sunny uh, raise his hand. Sunny, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add to what Simi was mentioning, and maybe it could be a follow uh, clarification also. Uh, because the battery swapping that Simi was mentioning was also, correct me, Simi, if I'm wrong, was also a decision that was influenced because of uh, the location of the charging stations. And uh, I think that the battery swapping method is much more apt for a situation like India because it's um, it not only uh, reduces the fear of leaving the vehicle somewhere for charging overnight, plus it also creates new synergies and new business models with the uh, uh, battery swapping uh, technology. Yeah, so because that will actually give an um, added advantage for the local players, more people to come in. It's kind of creating an opportunity for others. So. That is uh, one reason as to uh, why battery swapping was also opted out. Yes, absolutely. Second that. Sorry. Sure, thanks. Yeah, interesting presentation. Um, thanks, Simi. So I just had a few questions. One was, what is the range of the vehicles on a charge? Um, the other is I just wanted to get a clarification on what you were saying about the business model and whether the drivers are paying rent for these vehicles or if they're on a salary, you know, what that arrangement is and if it's different from the way they were operating before. And then the final one is, I, so I've just been, you know, confused uh, because the, you know, North India, there are all these e rickshaws that have come in that have been brought in by the private sector without any government support. And so I wanted to know why you know, the, the system in this case needed the subsidies, whereas there's so many other um, cases where e-rickshaws have been introduced in the country without the subsidies. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Christopher, for that. Um, uh, so, um, uh, I really don't know why there were no private players supporting this cost and, and that we had to go in for uh, subsidies. Um, uh, when we had, uh, I think uh, uh, maybe uh, those were the times when the autos were kind of, you know, uh, slowly but gradually getting introduced to the Indian market. For naturally, for an uh, for uh, for any company to get a market is uh, much more important. So, um, I think we started off, you know, uh, having, uh, you know, the implementation of the project a bit late. So naturally, we had to look out uh, for, uh, you know, manufacturers, and we had to give out subsidies. Now, um, as far as the uh, business model is uh, concerned. Um, we are uh, kind of, uh, the, the society is actually buying the auto rickshaws and they are renting it out to the drivers. So um, uh, so that's how the, uh, the system is working. And uh, subsidy is actually given out by the uh, society for each, uh, you know, each auto rickshaw. There is a, uh, um, a 50,000 uh, rupees, I don't know how much it will be to the euro, we might have to convert. 50,000 rupees is uh, what is a subsidy that's given from our end. And uh, 35,000 rupees is what the state government is giving. So that is uh, the amount as subsidy and um, uh, the rest is, is a loan that they are taking. Because finally at the end of it, uh, the, the uh, Nagalum Jilla Autorisha Society will be paying back for the loan and the the autos is, will, will be with the uh, Nagalum Jilla Autorisha Society. So um, those were the two things. Did I miss out any question? And the, the range of the vehicle on one charge? Um, how much, um, how much kilometers, uh, is it, is that yes. what you're asking? Exactly. I think it's, yes. it's around, uh, 70, 70 to 80 kilometers is what I guess. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, so here the question to CB, uh, what are the limitations faced on battery swapping and how do you tackle battery replacement for newer vehicle 
on the battery, uh, battery swapping strategy? Uh, I think I might not be able to give you a clear Straight answer up. for that because we we are we have not yet started off. So unless and until we don't you know enter into this uh, into this game, we are not sure what exactly is the challenge that we are going to face. So this might be uh, because I really am not sure to to be to be frank. But uh, I believe uh, uh, you know um, uh, maybe the availability or uh, you know the kind of uh, battery that's available for them. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm really not sure of the answer. So maybe I I can come back on this question maybe after two or three months once it is. It is on on ground, uh, or maybe someone could back me on this answer. You know, yeah. from other cities with experience, Sunny or somebody, Shruti or somebody. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sunny, go ahead. Yeah, great. I mean, just to back up, Simi, on that. Uh, <laughs> so on the battery swapping, um, I see. How do we tackle the battery battery replacement? So the batteries that come with the vehicles, they come with actually a warranty, uh, and this is also a difference between e-rickshaw and e-auto uh, is that the batteries that come with the e-auto rickshaw, they have like a three year warranty from the manufacturer. So yeah. that is covered under the replacement. Uh, so if it is more than three years, then again, I'm puzzled with the question. <laughs> yeah. So initially for at least three years, they are under warranty. So uh, the replacement uh, is not a problem. Yeah, And maybe just since I have the mic, I also want to address one of the points that Chris was raising on why there is a divide between the uptake in the north and the south, maybe from limited experience, I guess. Uh, because transport is something like a state topic in India. Uh, mm -hmm. Different states have uh, are at different levels in the production of uh, uh, EVs. And in the north, especially in Delhi, for example, they have been very uh, proactive in pushing electric vehicles and they have uh, implemented various policies, but that's also because of the special constitution of Delhi. But again, if you see in the north, there is a, there is a very, um, uh, very high uh, uh, introduction of e-rickshaws than, than e-autos. There is a difference between them because e-rickshaws are usually uh, light bodied and uh, they are they are not so expensive but the reason for that is also that they use a lead acid battery which is not uh, uh, which is, which does not have a very long life compared to e-autos which are being introduced in in kochi and there are something like 14 e-autos already in kochi that Simi was mentioning they are for used for last mile connectivity for the metros. So e-autos have a harder uh, body and they look like conventional auto, but they are electric uh, drive. So uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers or addresses the question. Yes, uh, thank you for that uh, very nice presentation. My question is um, from our experience, in auto truck East Africa Limited, where we manufacture these electric uh, three wheelers locally, there has been a challenge and a serious challenge with repair and maintenance. And this is in terms of part and component for these uh, electric three wheelers. What have you done to maneuver these challenges so that when a, a three wheeler breaks down, it can be able to be repaired easily and at an, at an affordable price? Thank you, Kenneth, for that uh, question. So I think we have uh, we have manufacturers locally. So, uh, so, 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 kind of, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have all the all the OEMs that's that's uh, right now we had uh, approached for the electric auto rickshaws are kind of having their base here in the city in the state. So uh, uh, the maintenance and uh, that that's one of the that's one of the uh, you know uh, major points that was also considered by the Jilla Auto Rickshaw Society when they were kind of procuring the auto rickshaws to have uh, the maintenance also uh, you know uh, supported uh, on a timely basis. That's very important. So uh, be it Payajio, be it Mahindra, we have uh, locally uh, they are actually available for uh, the support for the maintenance and the management so um i don't think uh, that at this moment is a is a problem for us because uh, 
that is again incorporated under the agreement that uh, they are kind of signing with the OEM. So maintenance and management is a part of the, you know, the entire uh, agreement that they have come into uh, while procuring these EOTOs. Yeah. Maybe we can move on to a little bit on the policy. There was a question from Warren. Of course, uh, those um, pilot projects, of course, help on the policy uh, for policy pathways for the electric mobility. Uh, here, uh, Warren, you posed a question, were there any policy recommendations from the project? Um, and how do you get to make policy propositions? Uh, yeah, please, Simi, maybe some some highlight on the policy pathways. <clears throat> so, uh, um, you know, uh, um, the, the project, electric auto project was actually uh, uh, driven by the EV policy of the state government, much to it. And um, uh, uh, the, there, there is a draft policy, uh, the, there's a draft policy that has been actually prepared for the city uh, it is with the Council of the Kochi Municipal Corporation. Uh, it has not yet been, you know, finalized. But uh, uh, we are actually uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, bring about uh, transformation of not only the electric auto rickshaws, but also uh, the, the logistics vehicle that is uh, giving a major chunk of uh, carbon emission to the city. So that is also on the, on the, one of the propositions that was made within the policy document. And uh, we are trying uh, to get that also done. So that, that's actually being supported by uh, ICLEI, the International Center for Local Environmental Initiatives. And uh, they are uh, right now supporting us uh, on, you know, um, the eco-logistics project or con converting the, the uh, logistics uh, vehicle, the small three-wheelers that's used to, used to take in goods and to convert them uh, to electric vehicles. So, uh, yeah, this, this, these, this, this is one of the propositions that was there in the policy that is being done for Kochi. Yeah. I think how, 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 is, how do you ensure uh, the first and last mile connectivity, connectivity to the metro stations? Is it like physically or digitally uh, um, integration facilities? I see the application service. Um, can you elaborate a bit on that, uh, Simi? Yeah, so so we we are trying to incorporate the uh, digital uh, you know digital uh, app which is called as the OSA, and uh, this would act as a as a uh, as a as a you know just like the uh, Uber or the uh, or the uh, Ola app that we have, this will act as a. Uh, uh, act on the, uh, you know, uh, can be uh, downloaded by any any person and can use it and can, uh, you know, uh, check out if there are any available EOTOs on the, on the present. And um, uh, uh, that, of course, will have to be done in discussion with the already existing feeder service of the Koji Metro Rail Limited. Because they are already running a are running a, a small feeder system, as we said, it's a small e rickshaw. So that's a smaller uh, electric uh, rickshaw. So they are running that. So, uh, but this will be again uh, available to anyone actually. So it's just not just the people who are using the metro, but to any citizen who are available and uh, who wants to use an electric auto. I think this is the app that will be. So we'll be going digital with it and also to find out locations, uh, you know, where exactly the auto is. So might, we might actually integrate a, a SIM with a GPS, uh, uh, you know, uh, tracker and all those uh, advanced technology to help support the society to keep uh, a track of all the auto rickshaws and uh, yeah, all such things, yes. And uh, I think there was one more question on the business model. So how did we arrive at this business model? We really did have a support of, uh, uh, of consultants, technical uh, you know, experts who were uh, with us studying on this, uh, on the uh, you know, present scenario and, and what kind of a business model we need to. So it's after, the, after a number of discussions, uh, pros and cons, and thinking into the sustainability of the project that we arrived on this uh, business model. Uh, right now but then um there are uh, this is a model that we have arrived when we are working with the society 
you know, but when we are working with an individual, uh, say, person uh, who is not part of this uh, society or uh, who is not a member of the society, we might have different uh, business model. In that case, we might work out a different model. But for all the members who are associated and who is working with the society, this is the uh, this is a business model that we have uh, arrived at after discussions with them. You know, after the discussion with uh, the the board, the experts, the uh, the state department, and uh, everyone concerned. Keeping in mind the sustainability of the project. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, just a follow-up question on that. Um, so, do go to municipality or who who is collecting the data uh, for? I mean, if there is some data collection, data sharing, uh, data sharing requirement in place, um, who is uh, taking the responsibility? So uh, naturally, uh, the Kochi Municipal Corporation is not having the, uh, the provision for you know uh, uh, keeping data, or it doesn't have a system on its own, which is I think common in almost all cities in India that data is a data is a you know is a major uh, uh, issue. So uh, what happens is like uh, CHED, the institution that I represent, uh, is usually you know kind of. Uh, collecting data and uh, we kind of keep that uh, data with us uh, or if, if, if we are hiring a consultant all the data is handed over to the C head so C head kind of acts as a data repository for um, you know kind of each and every project that's happening so we kind of keep keep that data with us because um, uh, with, with uh, because Kochi Municipal Corporation is not able to because we really don't have a uh, a self for transport we really don't have a, a particular department as such as transport and uh, this functionally has not yet been taken up by the Kochi municipal corporation or any municipal corporation for that matter from the state government as per the 73rd and 74th amendment so that still is with the state government so uh, you know so any data or any work related to transport uh, it has to be uh, supported by a parallel agency. So for corporation, uh, for the Kochi Municipal Corporation, it's always CHED who will be, uh, you know, managing and collating such data. Yeah. Most of country or region, they do not have the technical standard for e-rickshaws and charging method or infrastructure. Which best method techniques uh, do you suggest for the local innovators to deal with? so as to ensure efficient durability and safety for users and whole environment yeah. i think there is there is already um, uh, a guidelines that is put forward by the uh, by the uh, state government uh, in its ev policy guidelines and uh, the kerala state electricity board uh, also has certain uh, you know standards that needs to be met with you know as far as uh, setting up of a charging infrastructure is concerned or you know what kind of a, a charging um, uh, how much how much volt of electricity or what exactly so all these two these the these two documents actually support our or are on the uh, are one of the bases and naturally the uh, the uh, the uh, policy of the uh, the national government is also one of the one of the uh, policies that's that's actually you know uh, utilized by the uh, uh, yeah by the by the uh, 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 manufacturers because they have to abide by certain rules and regulations that actually been put forward by the Ministry of Renewable Energy. So, so this is uh, one thing that uh, you know forms the basis for anybody to actually for any uh, uh, OEMs to actually uh, you know uh, procure and uh, you know or to actually distribute any kind of electric vehicles. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, yes. And now I thank can... you. Um, I just missed something on. I just missed the concept on the business models that have been used by the rickshaws at the rulers. I just wanted to get an explanation on uh, how it works and if there is any best uh, okay. model which you think it, uh, can be also be adopted in, uh, in our region. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, the, the, it was the uh, business model that uh, you, you are asking about. So yes, so uh, we decided on, um, you know, uh, having a, a model wherein we will be uh, uh, the 
Ernanam Jilla or Treasure Society would be the beneficiary because um, the uh, the society is uh, the beneficiary for the same and has members of uh, approximately 2,500 auto rickshaws. And our aim is to you know to convert these autos into electric auto rickshaws. So um, uh, we were kind of in discussion with them uh, to find and understand you know what are the various. Um, uh, uh, business models that's available so uh, do we actually uh, uh, you know uh, uh, rent it out to the uh, drivers do we actually uh, make the individual auto rickshaw drivers the beneficiary or how do we do it so sustainability was one question that was in and then maintenance and management of these autos so how do we do it so so uh, so we discussed and uh, uh, discussed and deliberated. Should we rent out the uh, models uh, with various uh, uh, OEMs, uh, just as the Cocho Metro Rail is doing, or uh, should we should we should we should it be just on uh, you know just like a, a aggregator operated uh, auto rickshaw cluster? How do we do it? And the best. Uh, model uh, was selected by the Jilla Autoration Society, where the society will purchase the e autos through society subsidy and uh, as down payment. So uh, the down payment will be given by the Kochi Municipal Corporation uh, through GIZ and UN Habitat. And uh, the land for the setting up setting up of the charging infrastructure will be uh, will be done by KMC. Will be given by the Kochi Municipal Corporation free of cost. And the charging infrastructure will be set up, and uh, the the vehicles that's being procured by the Ernakulam uh, Jilla Autrisha Society will be rented out to the drivers. So, in a case, uh, some amount will be connected as rent by the society, which will act as a kind of a as a fund pool for them, which can be utilized for their uh, maintenance purpose to meet to meet the maintenance and the management. And also for uh, uh, probably for upscaling their uh, digital application in the auto rickshaw. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you very much for the explanation. And, and um, what happens after the uh, when the vehicles reach its uh, life uh, span? Like um, I mean, uh, when they are no longer roadworthy, and uh, they need to get uh, out of the road, or they need to be disposed. Do you have any policy on uh, kind of uh, disposing those uh, vehicles, old vehicles, or um, and and particularly the batteries? Uh, this this is this is um, um this is, this is on a long run. So uh, naturally, uh, we will be having we will we will be having a maintenance and management agreement with the OEM that's supporting us, and it usually will be a three year uh, three year uh, support. And we can, however, request an extension for the same. Same goes on with the uh, battery, and uh, it, it is it is it is uh, up with the OEM or the uh, the supporters who are actually. You know, supporting us with the uh, battery, uh, and I guess they they have a have a system to uh, uh, take care of. You know how uh, how these uh, battery or vehicles that's being operated. If if it is if it is in a period of time unable to be used, you know what can be done is uh, is is already there. Is is already a solution with them. I guess so. Uh, so I really don't think. Uh, that will be a problem for us. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, just a follow up question and also Sadi, uh, go ahead. Uh, maybe just I would start um, regarding the battery, um, battery management. Um, does does Kuchi has or in the Kerala state has a, a battery management or bat yeah, some some kind of second life battery uh, services. Uh, see, uh, we we do have, uh, you know, uh, uh, battery battery service providers are in number in 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 state. You know, we have enough number of uh, battery service providers. I mean, uh, if uh, you know, uh, even a second hand battery. We do get that it is never a, it's never going to be a case of you know shortage of battery or unavailability of uh, you know the 
uh, unavailable of any other you know charged or any kind of uh, system that's that's needed for this uh, auto rickshaw so we do have a number of uh, manufacturers who are here uh, who are uh, you know in 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 this field and uh, supporting this uh, you know, this industry so we really don't have a shortage as far as the batteries are concerned for replacement absolutely not mm -hmm. yeah um sunny yeah thanks i mean just a quick comment regarding the uh, end of life of batteries and stuff i mean one thing we have to note is uh, uh, i mean india it first it is a policy that the national government is uh, gradually introducing uh, because uh, be it the standards uh, for electric vehicles or uh, the disposal or recycling of batteries. These are something uh, national level topic. And then there is the, um, how do you say, the BIS, the Bureau of Standards, uh, I think. Uh, they are, uh, they have this on their, uh, uh, on their list. And uh, it's a process that, that will take some time uh, and that eventually it's going to be introduced. Um, and uh, there is also a budding industry of uh, recycling the batteries. And uh, with lithium ion, it's uh, uh, at least uh, research shows that uh, the, the chances of recycling uh, lithium ion batteries is much higher and, uh, and it creates a huge, a, a new uh, business sector by itself. Uh, who will depend on recycling these batteries. And then there is the component of second life batteries, where uh, batteries that are that cannot hold complete charge can be used as power banks, uh, intermediary power banks to store charge and then used for charging the other batteries. So uh, the point I want to make is there is all, all of this is under consideration. Uh, some of them are uh, beyond the city's uh, uh, purview of uh, management they are even uh, sometimes the states cannot intervene because some things are at the national government and the national government is doing their best to introduce this. So it's a process and that's it's going to come uh, as, as we progress in implementing EVs in the country. Uh, I, yeah, I, I just had one more question to, to understand for the, the procurement agreement. Like who, who were the parties to the agreement? Um, so who, you know, who was the procuring entity? And yeah, just to understand the legal relationship between the association and the corporation and GIZ and the other parties. So, uh, so here the procuring uh, agency is uh, the uh, society and uh, um, uh, GIZ is uh, funding uh, to the Kochi Municipal Corporation and uh, the Kochi Municipal Corporation will be transferring the subsidy amounts to the uh, uh, the Ernakulam Jilla Autoriksha Society for them to have uh, you know purchase the autos. So the, uh, the 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 tender bid, the bidding document, the tender is actually rolled out by the Ernakulam Jilla Autoriksha Society, and the agreement is between them and the and the uh, auto on uh, auto OEM, the auto manufacturers. Yeah. That's that's how it's working. Okay. Okay. Great. And then you said that the charging equipment is being provided by the corporation. Yeah. So. So do they have a separate yeah, so, contract with the OEM for that, or? No. Yeah, so so, so uh, the charging infrastructure is actually brought in by uh, with the support of the Kerala State Electricity Board, because they are as part of their uh, as part of the state government EV policy uh, expansion plan. They're actually setting up. Uh, um, charging infrastructure throughout the uh, cities in, in Kerala. So uh, so the Kochi Municipal Corporation will be transferring uh, some of the amounts to uh, to the uh, to the uh, Kerala State Electricity Board for setting up this setting up the uh, charging infrastructure. Uh, and an agreement will be or, or a memorandum of understanding will be signed between the Kochi Municipal Corporation and the Kerala State Electricity Board. Now earlier it was uh, it, we were planning to actually you know um, have uh, uh, different agencies actually you know uh, doing this work on ground, uh, but we didn't have enough time. We really don't have enough time uh, because we need all these up by at least by 
September because that's when the uh, the the project of the uh, GIS is commencing. So, so they actually didn't have much time, or rather, we didn't have much time to go for individuals. So we felt it safe to have uh, the Kerala State Electricity Board take it up and you know uh, through their uh, uh, system set up these infrastructures because and this will be. An additional three points apart from the uh, usual points that's already been decided by the Kerala State Electricity Board. So yeah, that's how it's anyway. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Mm, I think it's it, the vehicle would be purchased with a battery. So just to confirm, do the operators purchase the bat uh, vehicle with a battery or batteries and sold or it's only available rental with the uh, battery swapping? Um, can you elaborate a bit, uh, Simi, on this? I think the vehicle will be purchased with a battery, right? Yes, uh, the vehicle will be purchased uh, with the battery, and uh, it's not in rental. I think yeah, it's just it's, since it's a battery swapping model, uh, it, it, we we get this vehicle along with the uh, along with the battery, mm -hmm. and I think the cost is coming to approximately two point four lakhs for a battery swapping uh, electric uh, auto, e-auto, 2.4 lakhs is what I guess it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, and not for rental or anything, yeah. Just a quick one. Did you provide uh, training to the drivers as well? Uh, yes, uh, the training was mostly to the drivers and uh, uh, you know how they can kind of carry out how is the maintenance and the management uh, uh, has to be done for the uh, e auto rickshaw. So we had various sessions, you know. So uh, it's not just to the board of directors. The initial talk and discussion was, of course, with the board of directors. But uh, it is uh, it is for the drivers that we had to give. We had to you know kind of create that kind of uh, an awareness about electric vehicles and. Uh, what are the uh, ways and means of maintaining and managing such, uh, you know, uh, such vehicles? And uh, we did have a support of experts who already worked in various cities in India, and uh, they were kind of sharing uh, their experiences, and uh, that's how we got them on board. Yeah. Yes, I was just wondering if. Um the community has faced any issues on on uh, safety because if we uh, are rather quite uh, vehicles and um, some of the issues that came up when we were collecting some um, data for solution plus was people envisioned envisioned that um, it could cause um, uh, more accidents compared to the conventional ones so i just wanted to find out if uh, you have had any safety issues uh none as of uh, as of yet because we have not rolled out uh but but with the e-rickshaws that's actually applying as feeder we have not received any kind of uh, uh information or there has not been any kind of an info on accidents or anything of that sort and uh, we are very you know we are not uh, we are a, we are a, we are a city where you can have you can see people honking and uh, horns are a part and parcel of our transport system. So, uh, and that's the main reason as to why we have a no horn day on certain <laughs> months. So you can understand, you know, how badly we honk. So uh, we really have on a, on a lighter side, but we really have not had uh, any kind of, a, you know, mishap happening. Yeah. So these are all things that, that, that will come out uh, once the trial happens. But, uh, but I don't think such things would happen, I guess. Yeah. Nothing of that sort. Hopefully, yes. Let's go ahead. Yeah, and uh, on, on the road safety front, I think the driver training also includes uh, the element of uh, road safety in, in, in their training. So that could also, to some extent, uh, mitigate uh, this issue of accidents, I presume. And another thing is like, you know, the, the kind of uh, speed that an electric auto rickshaw has compared to, you know, the normal auto rickshaws is, it's, it's just quite peaceful, I guess, while it is on the road. So, you know, I don't think there is a chance of uh, the kind of accident. On one hand, the drivers himself are inculcated with the idea of, you know, going safely, driving safely and going slowly. Uh, so I think uh, the chances of such a mishap is 
very nil, I guess. Yeah, very much low. Yeah, I see one more question from Jeremy. How do you ensure the affordability of electric three wheeler to the society, um, especially after project phase? Um, do local society afford to buy them? Um, uh, yes. So um, two two answers that I would like to give is. Uh, so the one thing uh, you know, the government it's actually you know. Uh, what do you say? It's part, actually based on the national and state policy, again. And there's a huge difference between the national policy and the state policy. So, uh, uh, you know, um, there were subsidies that were available uh, with the national policy, like frame one, frame two. I think it's easily available on the net and the documents are very much available. So there were subsidies that were available, but I don't think right now uh, those subsidies are there for the E3 e e wheelers, I'm not sure. And uh, we have subsidies for the state government. So, you know, these subsidies are actually brought in because, uh, you know, the government kind of wants to encourage people to, you know, go forward, you know, trying out the um, electric vehicles or conversion, or, or it's part of the expansion of the electric mobility scenario. Now, uh, there are uh, many people in, in, in the city who are actually converting uh, their two wheelers into electric wheelers, electric two wheelers. So that process is actually uh, happening. Even you have many people who are actually right now purchasing EV cars, EV four wheelers. So, uh, you know, that conversion, because they feel, you know, uh, um, you know, driving within the city, the kind of mileage that they're getting for their individual or private vehicles is much uh, low when it is compared to EV uh, EV cars or EV two wheelers. So, so for them, it's easier, it's safer, and uh, it's much better while they are flying within the city. So, you know, such such kind of a conversion is happening. People are gradually understanding. People are slowly, you know, getting into that track of conversion into you know electric vehicles. So. So that that process is on. Even without subsidy, they are kind of actually moving in. But you know, when you kind of need to talk about a subsidy, it has to come from the state government because the state government itself is holding the function of uh, transport. So, uh, uh, or else, um, you know, we might think of uh, giving up a subsidy. The Kochi Municipal Corporation can think of giving it out subsidies, but it will have to, you know. Um, prepare its own um, uh, agenda and guidelines and uh, you know get funds for uh, but that is a different part so uh, this is what is you know happening with the um, and and electric vehicles uh, it, it is is not affordable for a uh, 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 middle income family with, within the city it, it, it is kind of expensive but over a gradually over a period of time people will start thinking of you know, uh, converting into electric vehicles. And I think over a period of time, things will change. The market will change, is what I believe. Yeah. Of the conversion, how how is uh, Kochi municipality or uh, state government or the municipality supporting on the vehicle conversion? Because it's in terms of the cost, it's, it's, uh, it's more cheaper than buying the new vehicle. And how is that policy uh, rolling out uh, in terms of conversion? Okay, so uh, the uh, the Kochi Municipal Corporation, um, uh, you know, started thinking about electric mobility e vehicles. You know, since when 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 we started talking about urban pathways, so it's a very normal process, and to incorporate that idea into their uh, you know daily uh, daily uh, agenda is is uh, is a is a task. But now that since that is in already, you know, they are making, you know, kind of uh, the Honorable Mayor himself is actually, you know, talking to delegates, finding out if there are other opportunities or funds that's available for, you know, uh, scaling it up. So that's what the Municipal Corporation is trying to do. But the Municipal Corporation is actually focusing on public transport. But there are, you know, uh, f there are individuals who are actually converting their private, uh, private vehicles into EV. But that is solely an individual decision which is uh, which is not influenced by uh, the municipal corporation so because i think this this has not uh, come out to be uh, uh, as uh, what do you say uh, it has not come out as a policy or uh, it has not been uh, you know uh, pointed out to to be followed by the municipal corporation so it's 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 your choice 
but uh, converting the public transport is a is a choice that the state government has taken and so when a city decides that it's it's it needs to convert its public transport into ev it has a support from the uh, state government mm -hmm. so uh, so uh, these are two different scenarios when we are talking of course yes there might be subsidies that would uh, support individuals to you know uh, when they are purchasing their uh, uh, purchasing their vehicles uh, but these are two different uh, levels as we are when we are talking about uh, electric vehicles yeah Thank you so much. Uh, we are now like end of the session. I'll just uh, want to raise if there is any last question that anybody wants to pose. Uh, if not, then I would really, really like to thank Simi uh, for the wonderful presentation and also uh, giving insights on the E3-wheelers. Uh, rolling out in Kochi. Also, thanks to everyone who has participated and also on behalf of Emily, who couldn't join today, and Sunny, who, who are coordinating this session. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, wish you a nice day. Thank you so much.